everyone, and welcome to the Yarn Journey Crochet Podcast. Except this is not a podcast episode. This is a tag video. Um, so I realized that the Yarn Creator video started by 24 Karat Crochet actually had five questions to it. And I didn't realize that because... <laughs> No one really said anything except like one or two towards the fact, like towards the end, once I had already done my video. Um, excuse me, I'm eating chips and cookies out of my teeth because we had a picnic. Um, so I'm gonna answer those. And Chevy Rill did a fiber arts tag, and she's not entirely sure how old it is, but. I'm gonna do it because it looked like fun and I like tag videos. Um, and she also recently created a Fiber Friends tag, which I will be doing with my husband. So you will get to meet my very angry looking husband. He always looks pissed at the world, but he's not. <laughs> so <laughs> let's get started. So question number one, how long have you been crocheting? I've known how to crochet for 15 years, uh, 16 years now um but i have recently i would say within the last six years is when i really started to pick it up and do it as a hobby on a regular basis um my i was pregnant with my daughter when i started um and then as i was pregnant with my son I started to challenge myself more with different techniques and stitches and just learning more. Before that, it was just basic double crochets, um, you know, single crochets, half doubles, nothing extravagant, you know. Um, the only thing that I really did was color change. Ooh, that was a weird hiccup. So, yes, who did you learn or who taught you to crochet? How did you learn or who taught you how to crochet? There we go. My grandma taught me to crochet when I was about eight or nine years old. And I asked her to teach me because I was watching her do it and it looked interesting and kind of just sparked from there. She taught me how to chain and double crochet and that was it. And once I got it down with some scrap yarn, she took me to Walmart. And she said I could pick a yarn that I liked. And for whatever reason, I didn't go for greens or blues or purples, pinks, like most girls would. No, I went for the red, white, and blue variegated red heart yarn. <laughs> and I still have one skein of it, but I don't know what I'm ever going to use it for. Because I am not someone that is extremely patriotic. So it might just sit there for a while. Why did you start making YouTube videos? Um, well, I discovered knitting podcasts one day. I think I was like looking up how to knit and a knitting podcast came up and I was like a knitting podcast. What? So I started watching that and I was like, I wonder if they have crochet podcasts. And I saw them and I noticed that there were not very many crochet podcasts that, you know, had the same similar formatting of a knitting podcast that were popular and easy to find. So I was sitting there talking to my husband one day and I was like, I should totally podcast. I could do that. Like, I think I'm kind of entertaining. I can, I can totally do that. And I literally thought about it for maybe a week and then started making a crochet podcast. And I've already had experience with YouTube in the past. So I kind of knew the functioning of it, of how it basically worked and not much of the like the layout of uploading and stuff has changed that much. So it just kind of felt natural to do YouTube. Um, extra questions. What is your favorite type of project to make? Hmm. That's hard. Um, I would have to say hats. 
only because hats are really fast and they make great gifts. So that seems to be my go-to is just crocheting gifts, like hats for gifts. But I like doing everything. I haven't found something that I don't like making, if that makes sense. Do, okay, question number five. Do members of your family crochet or other similar crafts? My grandma is the only one that crochets. I think maybe my Aunt Deb does a little bit, but I don't think it is a, like, a continual hobby for her. I think it's just a once in a while thing where my grandma and me, we kind of do it all the time. Well, I know my grandma does a lot of other stuff. She does, like, plastic canvas stuff. She does... Um, cross stitch she does like she does a lot of cross stitch whether it's on plastic canvas cloth whatever she does quite a bit so yeah she's the only person that will that does similar crafts i think i'm the only one that knits that is living <laughs> um i'm sure there's probably people in my grandma's family that knit like older people but i think i'm the only one that knits at this point and that was all the questions for the 24 karat crochet video. Um, now is the fiber arts tag. So first question is, who are you? I'm Holly. I am the host of the Yarn Dream Crochet podcast. I am a wife. I am a mom of two amazing kids that sometimes makes me go bananas. Um, I'm originally from California and live in Virginia. I am um, kind of a Jack Jill of all trades, I guess you can say. I do a little bit of everything. I like home repair, DIY, crafty stuff. Um, I love reading, learning. That's just, and I'm a Supernatural fan. That's me. <laughs> um, so question number two, when and why did you start knitting, crocheting, spinning, or weaving? Um, well, I already said when for crocheting. Uh, when I started knitting was probably about five months ago, five, six months ago. I've been trying <laughs> to knit. Um, why did I start crocheting? It was just natural. I mean, I saw it with my grandma and my mom did crochet before she passed away and I just wanted to crochet. It looked interesting to me when, as a kid. And knitting, I felt like it was kind of just a natural procession from crocheting. Like, okay, well, I've mastered doing the crocheting, but I really want to learn to knit so I can kind of get the basics down. Like I said, jacket of all trades kind of thing. Like I like to learn a lot of different things, but maybe not the master of everything, but you know, I love learning, and if it's something that seems interesting, I will learn it. Um, what is your favorite or proudest make? I have it right here. It's hanging. This is my proudest make because this is the only blanket. Okay, I can't say only. This is the first blanket I ever finished. Sorry, my for whatever reason, my uh daughter's chair was sitting on it this is the this is the first blanket i ever finished and it was for my daughter and it is wild it is bright it is in your face crazy obnoxious <laughs> but i love it because it's something that i hope she's gonna treasure forever um she sleeps with it every night and it like i said it was the very first blanket that I actually finished. So, and this is made all out of Karen cakes. I have no idea what the colorways are because I made this before my son was even born. I think this is what I was working on when I was pregnant with him. So that's like two, two years ago at this point. So first I'll go with the border. The border is just like a couple rows of double crochet, but I learned how to do these little daisy flowers but this is before I knew what blocking was sorry if there's dog here so I did these little daisy flowers on the edge all the way across you know 
spaced them out as evenly as I could. Um, and then I did basket weave. And then, so for every ball of yarn, I did a different stitch. So I'll have two of the same color, but a different stitch for each ball where I started. So first is basket weave and then shell stitch, which ends up looking like a ripple. And then next color, I did baubles and then granny stripes. And this stitch, I'm not sure what it's called, but I got it from Happy Berry Crochet. She did a tutorial on it. And it's that one. And then I just did double crochet puff stitch and puff stitches. And then at this point I was like, oh crap, I am running out of stitches that will fit this. So I did some double crochets. <laughs> and I have to say, I really love this colorway the most because it reminds me of a sunset. Um, I think it's like some, some kind of confetti something or other. And then the last part was waffle stitch. I am so proud of this blanket because I, as much as people probably won't like it because of how bright and crazy it is and the mismatched colors and there's no coordination at all, but I love it because I made it for my daughter. She got to pick out the yarn and I completed it. Like I actually completed a giant blanket and this fits her twin size bed and overlaps quite a bit. So, I mean, I could probably lay it flat across the double bed and it won't really like overhang like it's that big um so i love this like i love this blanket and like i said it's loud and obnoxious and probably not for everyone like my grandma i showed my grandma and she's like that's bright <laughs> um but like i said it was one of those experiences that i made something with my daughter for the first time and she got to help pick everything out so it's kind of special to me. It's near and dear to my heart and I hope she will treasure it forever. So number four is what is your most disastrous make? It's a blanket that my son is currently sleeping with. <laughs> I forgot it upstairs, but this is before I knew what sewing my ends when sewing in my ends were. And so all along the sides where I did the color change, which I did the color change vertically. So there's stripes this way. And so at the top and the bottom of the blanket, there are knots tied. And I did this blanket before I was pregnant with my daughter. So Colin. Um, I did this blanket well before I was pregnant with my daughter. I think I was in high school and I was making it for my sister because she was pregnant and we weren't sure if she was having a boy or girl yet. So I was making one. Actually, I think I was in the process of making two. I was making one that was bright pink and white and blue and yellow, which those blue and yellow were like baby colors. <coughs> um, and she ended up having a girl, which I didn't even finish that blanket. I didn't tell her I was making it for her or, or anything. Um, but I was working on the blue and yellow one a lot when I was in school and everyone would joke, oh, are you pregnant? Are you having a baby? Which at the time I didn't know I was pregnant. I was a senior in high school, but I was already married. I got married when I was 18. I graduated and turned 19. So I was married for four months before I graduated high school. So I was pregnant and I didn't even know it at that point. And yeah, so that ended up being my son's blanket that he now sleeps with. But all on the edges, you can see these knots and you can feel it. It's terrible. It's terrible. But he sleeps with it and he likes it and it works. Yes. I'm not expecting it to last forever like this one because this one I knew what I was doing and I sewed in the ends and stuff. So 
Yeah. Um, let's see. Number five. Do you have a favorite place to buy yarn or fiber, local or online? Oh, that's hard. That's so hard. So I'm going to do both. So for online, I love lovecrochet.com because they have so many different types of yarn. I haven't ordered from Wool Warehouse, but I want to. Um, so as of right now, it's Love Crochet or Knit Picks. Those are my two favorite onlines. Um, local, if I want expensive yarn, I'll go to my local yarn shop, but it's not my favorite. It's my favorite if I want something nice, but I don't have the budget to buy, you know, fancy yarn every week or, you know, how you see most podcasters, it seems like every week they have two, three skeins of hand dyed yarn to show. I could never afford that ever. Like, and even if I could like say I win the lottery tomorrow and I win $10 billion. Okay. I I'm lying. I would say I probably still wouldn't buy that much yarn, like that much hand dyed yarn, but I probably would. So we'll say, let's say I win a million dollars. I still wouldn't buy that much yarn hand dyed. Like, I'd go bananas at a Joanne, <laughs> a Joanne fabric. But, um, yeah. So, besides hand-dyed yarn, my local would probably be Joanne fabric. Because I, they have a really good selection of this new one that we got. So, I am, uh, I'm really liking it. My son was about to dump goldfish crackers after he dumped an entire bag of chips on the floor. Good thing those chips were only 80 cents. <laughs> um, what is the most used or loved pattern? Um, I don't have a most used pattern, but most loved. Mm. I would have to say if I had to go back and remake something, I would probably do the Irogenia shawl. Or I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce it. It's gorgeous. And I think it is the perfect shawl to highlight hand dyed yarns for crocheting. And I, I love it. I just love the way it came out. I love the size. I love the drape. It's perfect. Like I loved it. What is your most dreaded knitting, spinning, crocheting task? Your most, that sentence makes no sense. Your most dreaded, Knitting, spinning, crocheting task is. That is terrible grammar. Okay. Um, my most dreaded task of crocheting would be chaining. I hate chaining. I hate going back because one, I always lose count. Two, I always do it way too tight and I always think, oh no, it'll be fine. I'll just chain loose. It'll be fine. I never do, ever. So it's a pain in the butt because I always have to go back and like think about it. And then when you go to start your row, it's like, okay, do I just do it in the first loop or do I do it in the back loop to get a really pretty edge? And if you do it in the back loop, it takes me forever. It takes me forever to do it. So yes. Um, and your favorite task for crocheting would be sewing in the ends because then I'm finished. I'm done. Um, and it's kind of therapeutic. It's something that's kind of mindless that you don't really have to think about. Um, you can just do it and be done. Um, now, for most dreaded with knitting, would <laughs> for knitting, it's completely opposite. So the most dreaded would be sewing in the ends because it it's not mindless. You have to think about it. You have to make sure you don't go through the front of your fabric. And the favorite task for knitting is casting on. <laughs> so complete opposites for knitting and crochet. Um, what is your favorite crafting entertainment? Podcasts. I watch podcasts most of the time when I'm doing that. And I will have to say, though, lately I've been kind of burnt out on podcasts. Just because there's been so many, well, one, finding new podcasts, two, watching all of the episodes, three, you know, it seems like once I get done with one week, all the new ones are coming out for the next week. So there's no like break. So 
I'm like, oh my god, I gotta queue up with all these. And it's like, I'm putting pressure on myself to watch them, which makes no sense. But I am. And it makes no sense. I don't get it. But if it's not podcasts, it's supernatural. Like, I... I know you're going to hear this a lot on my channel, but I am, like, a diehard fan. Like, oh, my gosh. I love it. I actually, I'm on the third repeat of all the seasons. Like, I've watched Supernatural the first time. Watched Supernatural the second time. And then I was waiting for the new season to come out. And now as I'm watching the new season, I'm going back again. And I think I'm on, like, season two again. In between um, the new ep the new episodes, <laughs> that makes me sound like I'm constantly watching stuff, but I'm really not. I just I like to call in, get it from him, bring it here. Be nice. No hitting. Um. I mainly watch it once the kids go to bed or nap time or before they wake up. So sometimes I get like up to six hours between bedtime, nap time and morning before they wake up. So yeah, that's when I mainly watch everything or if they're like playing intently, what do you think you're doing? No. So if they're intently watching something then I'll like watch something on my computer or whatever. So, yeah. Um, for patterns, do you prefer books, magazines, Ravelry, or would you rather make up your own? I love making up my own, and I've done it for a really long time until I discovered what Ravelry was. Um, which, I love Ravelry. I love books, but I feel like sometimes when you buy books and magazines, there'll be patterns in there that you really don't want. Um, but you'll buy it for a few, and then the rest of them are like, eh. Um, but definitely Ravelry and making up my own, for sure. Um, but sometimes you don't want to make up your own. You don't want to have to write everything down, and it could be a pain. So Ravelry. Ravelry is probably my go-to. What is your favorite brand of knitting needles or crochet hooks? Or for spinning, what is your favorite spinning wheel or spindle? I don't have a favorite brand only because I would rather buy whole sets on eBay or Amazon for like eight to 10 bucks for a whole set and then be unnamed. I'm not very picky. I would rather have a whole cheap set than buy like two hooks for $20. Like, that's insane to me. I, I can't see. I, mm -mm. I'm, I'm a bargain shopper for the most part, and the thought of spending a whole bunch of money on hooks and needles, ugh, no. I would rather go nameless and keep it cheap. So I don't really have a favorite brand. <laughs> what is your favorite notion or tool? Probably like stitch markers or progress keepers because they're cute and they add a little fun bling to your projects. And it's nice to see the progress that you make on stuff. So I would definitely say that. Um, what is your favorite project? Your current, what is your current favorite project? Oh my gosh, I don't know. I feel like all my projects are stressing me out right now. I don't know. I don't have a current favorite one right now. All of them, I kind of just want to be like, "Ugh, you're stressing me out. Go away. Mm. So, yeah, I don't have a current favorite right now. <laughs> well, no, I take that back. I've actually been making quite a few of these. These are my face scrubbies. And I've actually, this is part of a set. This is one of a set. So I've made two of these and then I'm starting on a raspberry color one. So I'll say that my uh, plush face scrubbies has been my favorite right now and dishcloths. 
which I say dish, but I mean washcloths, like for your body, not for dishes. I won't use that. Um, favorite place to knit, crochet, spin in public? Probably the doctor's. Because I don't really, like, if I'm going grocery shopping, I don't take it with me because I'm always busy wrangling two kids and I won't drive because I am driving. So I'm not going to crochet and drive um, or knit. My, I would have to say probably the doctor's office. Um, what is your favorite fiber arts book? Oh, goodness. I probably have to say... The one I just got, which was the, let's see. Oh, ew, this coffee's old. I thought that coffee cup was empty. <laughs> I'd have to say probably the crochet cables or yeah, Celtic crochet, cable crochet. Oh my God, I can't read. Okay, Celtic cable crochet. That is probably so far my favorite. Like I have been dying to get this book. And when I saw that Knitpix only had it on sale for $14.99, I was like, sold. I'm getting it because normally it's hard to find this book for less than that. Like most of the time it's like $24. I'll just put that back. <laughs> I'll take that to the thing later. But yes, this is probably my favorite book that I've gotten. That's crochet related. Um, let's see. Do you have any other hobbies? Oh, good Lord. Yes. I cross stitch. Okay, so crochet, knit, cross stitch. I paint. I sew. I'm not a good sewer, but I can do it. I mean, yeah. Um, I can draw. I like book binding. I like jewelry making. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to think if there's anything else. I like candle making too. Um, I haven't tried soap just because lye scares me because you're supposed to add lye to water, but not water to lye because if you add water to the lye and not the opposite way, it can like explode in your face and that, that just is a little too much for me. Um, I like painting ceramics. My mom was actually a ceramics business owner. When she was alive, she actually had her own shop where she would make ceramics, she would hold parties, she would teach classes, and she taught all kinds of ceramic teaching, like, stuff. Um, so I come from a pretty crafty background. My dad was a really good at drawing, so I think I get my drawing talent from him. Although, I am, for me to produce really good drawn work, I have to have inspiration, and I have to be able to sit there for hours on end to complete the work. So, yeah. <laughs> I have a lot of hobbies. And I'm pretty sure my husband is like, okay. It drives, I'm pretty sure it drives him nuts. Because every time I find something new, like these diamond paintings that have been coming out, I'm like, I've been eyeballing them a lot. And I'm like, ooh, that looks like so much fun. And I know if I get them, my husband's going to be like, if you get one more damn hobby, I'm going to kill you, woman. I'm going to do it. <laughs> so no more hobbies, but yes, that's what I, I do. If you could meet anyone in the fiber arts community, who would it be? Oh, God, I don't know. I don't know. I don't really. I don't know. I, I'm like that. I don't, I don't know. I'm weird because even if this was like, oh, if this was your favorite celebrity, who would you want to meet? Okay, besides like, besides Jen, Jack, blah, 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 besides Jared Padalecki and Jensen Ackles, I would say nobody. Because I feel like, I mean, even them, like if someone was saying you can go meet them, I'd be like, okay, I will. But I, feel, I mean, they're celebrities. They're people too, you know, like. I never understood the whole, like, oh, meet and greet a band. I don't care. I mean, yeah, I like their music, but they're just people. <laughs> so, I don't know. I'm Unless Jared Padalecki and Jensen Ackles does fiber-related stuff, I don't know. 
<laughs> I'm probably super duper creepy when it comes to them. Like, people are like, you're crazy. But, oh, they hold a special place in my heart. <laughs> okay, rapid fire, knit or crochet? Crochet. Spin or weave? Never done either. Colors or neutrals? Neutrals. Sweater or socks? Sweater. So, yeah. That's it. That's the tag. This is probably a lot longer than you thought it was going to be, and it was probably a lot longer than I thought it was going to be. So, yeah. And I'm sorry that I am so blaringly white today. I am not this white in person. It's just the way the lighting is outside. It's very overcast, and it is probably bouncing off my car right now because my car is white. Like, if you can see, I actually do have color to my face. Hi. <laughs> like, here. I, I, I do have color. I am not a ghost. <laughs> I am so white. It's crazy. Okay. What are you doing? You want to say hi? We'll have my son come on for a minute. Because who can deny this cute face? Oh, my goodness. Thank you. Say hi. Say hi. Yeah. <laughs> See, even he looks really pale here, and he's not that pale. Oh, I've got a hair in my eye. Okay. So, we... We're going to say bye-bye. Bye -bye. Can we say bye-bye? Bye -bye. Say bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> say bye-bye. Bye -bye. No. Bye -bye. My daughter's over there saying bye-bye. All right. We are done, and you can expect a normal podcast from me on Sunday and probably the Fiber Friends tag some other day. What are you doing? Some other day in the week, probably Monday or Tuesday. So I will see you guys all next week or this weekend. Bye. Hey everyone. So I completely forgot to mention that I was, this is a tag video. I forgot to tag people. So I'm actually sitting outside in my backyard. Um, it's actually night at this point. Like you can't tell, it looks still really bright over here, but it's really not like the sun is already past the horizon at this point. Like it will be dark in about 10 minutes, but somehow I, you could see me. I don't get it. Okay. Anyways, tagging. I forgot to tag people and all the questions will be down below for anybody. And if you want to do this tag and I don't tag you, feel free to do it and let me know because I like reading. I like watching them. Um, so I'm going to tag, I have a pine needle. <laughs> I'm going to tag Lacey from Hooked on Owls, Michelle from the Mickey Midge podcast, and Jody from Evan Gay's podcast. That's who I am tagging. I seem like I always tag Lacey, but that's because we're friends. <laughs> okay, anyways, I will let you guys... Okay, that's just the natural gap in my teeth. I thought I had lipstick again. I'm outside watching my kids play right now. So I will see you guys all on Sunday. Bye!